Welcome to worship. We're so grateful you are here with us this morning in safely in your homes. Praying that you've had a good week and praying that you are staying safe and healthy. A few announcements this morning. Um, next week is the West Ohio Annual Conference on uh, September 12th. And during that, during the conference, um, there's also um, the ordination of, of uh, commissioning and ordination of clergy. And at that conference next week, I will be ordained as an elder. And so you are invited to attend that. If you go to the West Ohio Conference website, um, the ordination is at 3.30 next Saturday. 
and it'll be live streamed. Uh, another, another note, voter registration begins next week as well for our ministry here. Uh, a group, a group here, the Sister Circle has been working on that and there will be um, a table set up from nine to three here at our site and also at another site. So we have a flyer with that information um, for every Saturday in September and the first Saturday in October. Be sure that you are registered. Be sure that you have um, applied for an absentee ballot to be safe in voting. Um, call the church office if you want to participate in this most important volunteer effort. This is an important ministry that's going on right now in our church. It's a humanitarian effort, and there are opportunities still for people to participate and to volunteer. So please call the church office because there are still needs for this ministry. Um, we are having communion today, so take this time, if you haven't already, to prepare your elements, whatever your preference is for that at home. And this morning, we are going to be talking about um, Christians and conflict, continuing in the book of Matthew, chapter 18. How do we resolve conflict as Christians, the world has one way, and Christians ought to have another way. So we will see what Jesus says about this. Amen? Amen. Let us praise and worship the Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord God Almighty, early in the morning our songs shall rise to Thee. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, Sons, blessed Trinity, holy. I know he sweet I know storm clouds may rise strong winds may blow oh I'll tell the world wherever I go that I have found a Savior, and He's sweet, I know. worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. 
come let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness give him the honor give him the praise come let us worship the Lord let's give him the praise come let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness Come, let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Give him the honor, give him the praise. Come, let us worship the Lord, let's give him the praise. Worship Him, worship Him, give my God the glory, give my God the praise, worship Him, worship Him. Come, let us worship the Lord. Let's give him the praise. Amen. Come, let us worship the Lord and give him our praise. Amen. Amen. Let us go to God in prayer. Father God, we are thankful once again to be able to assemble as your servants in our homes and in this house of worship. Lord, we pray your presence and all that you would have us to do in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, we are challenged daily by evil, prejudice, hate, and the temptation to question even your name and your presence within our lives and in the Holy Trinity. We rebuke this power with that, we claim through your precious Holy Spirit, we will remain steadfast and unmovable, always, always abounding in you. Bless us, dear Lord, as we celebrate together on this day of Sabbath. Nurture us through times of grief, through times of indecision, through time of racial disharmony, all things that are not pleasing in your sight. Lord, we look to you as the author and the finisher of our faith in your name without hesitation. Even with challenges, Lord, we will continue to pray and be your humble servants. These prayers we offer in the matchless name of our son, Jesus Christ, your son, Jesus Christ, amen. And now I would ask you to turn to page 889 for our affirmation of faith. There is one God and there is one mediator, Jesus Christ, who came as a ransom for all to whom we testify. Read together. Sure, and worthy of full acceptance that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners and was manifested in the flesh, vindicated in the spirit, seen by angels, proclaimed among the nations, believed in throughout the world, taken up in glory. Great indeed is the mystery of the gospel. Amen. Let us pray. O oh, Sovereign One, how we love you. We worship you and we adore you. Thank you for giving us rest throughout the night and for waking us up this morning. 
All of the universe marvels at your works. You are faithful. You are mighty and victorious in all battles. You have never failed us. You cannot fail. We stand in awe of the beauty of nature, of your creatures, of the heavens, and your image we see in one another. We are in awe of your holy presence in this physical sanctuary and the sanctuaries of our bodies and our homes. May all of your people declare as Joshua declared, as for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. Your gift of grace renders us breathless and your mercy is unmatched. You are good. You are good. If we had a thousand tongues, we couldn't praise you enough. You are perfect, you are sinless, which makes clear our imperfections and our sin. Let the repentant one confess of sin, and may that one be redeemed. Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide in us. We give you praise, honor, and glory for the joys and celebrations of our lives. And we rely on your healing power for the sick, for those who are suffering in the body. And we rely on your guidance and comfort, Holy Spirit, for those of us who are suffering in the body, the mind, and the soul. May the weak in spirit be strong. And as bearers of your likeness, use us to be your heart. Use us to be your hands and your feet in this world. We pray for compassion, competence, and humility and those who govern, for there is evil in this world. You gave us this beautiful world and filled it with all that we need. We are your creatures, and we give you all of the praise, honor, and glory in the name of the great mediator the great healer who taught his disciples to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Please continue to give your offering, your tithes and your offering, online or mail-in. It is a very, very important and sacred, sacred time of worship. Um, the ministries, the ministries of the church continue, and even more so during a time of great pain in our world. But God doesn't fail to provide for us never fails to provide. Let us pray. Lord, you alone are the source of all that we need in this life and in the next. You are the source of eternal life, and you provide all that is material and all that is non-material. You are a mighty wonder. We bring the fruit of our labor into your storehouse. May we be good stewards responsible and faithful stewards over the earth and all that is within. May we be generous to our neighbors. May we be generous to our neighbors. 
In the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus, the living Christ, amen, amen.
found in Matthew 18, verses 15 through 20, reading from the New Revised Standard Version. Reproving another who sins. If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth, truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Amen? Amen. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. Thank you for the reading of God's holy word. Let us pray. Mighty and gracious God, an awesome wonder, we thank you for the privilege of sitting at your feet to hear your word. Lord, use this most imperfect vessel. Let my words be your words. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, for you are our strength and you are our redeemer. Pour into your people. Holy Spirit, have your way. Have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Christians in conflict. Conflict. Where two or more are gathered, eventually there will be conflict. It's eventual. You know, the newly married couple Enjoy a honeymoon period, a time of blissful, blissful, uh, wedded bliss. And similarly, there's a honeymoon period in new relationships, in new social relationships, in new business relationships. There's a honeymoon period for these newly formed relationships. And at some point, at some point, There will be disagreements and sinful offenses. At some point, one will wrong the other. One will sin against the other. And so as Christians, how do we handle offenses from another? How do we handle conflict? Christ instructs us how to do so in Matthew 18. Verse 15, if another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. Now, this first step eliminates what could be a downward spiral of hurt, of pain, of anger, 
and compounded offenses. Jesus didn't say, now get on the phone and call somebody and talk about it. (laughs) Jesus didn't say, bring it up in a passive aggressive manner in a meeting. Jesus didn't say, let me call someone and unpack all of this. Jesus didn't say that. No, Jesus said, point out the fault when the two of you are alone. The first step eliminates the potential for gossip, for messiness, and for further hurt feelings. If the dispute is settled at this stage, then the sin, the offense remains between the two. No one else need know and their relationship is restored. So how does one prepare to confront a brother or a sister about their sin? First, we need to be clear about the facts. Was there an actual offense or is there a suspicion of one? If there is an offense, then secondly, approach prayerfully. Ask God, is confrontation the path you would have me to take? Lastly, approach with humility. If you are to confront, approach with humility and love for the brother or the sister. Confrontation is not about judgment. It's not about being right. It's about love. It's about love for our brother, for our sister, and reconciling the relationship. It's about peace and harmony. So there's work to be done on both sides. The first step, yes, veracity is important. The facts, make sure the facts, that you've got your facts straight. So if the offending party doesn't listen, Jesus further instructs in verse 16, take one or two others along with you so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. Now be careful who you take along with you. The passage presumes that the presumption is that the two are credible witnesses. The lives of witnesses have ended lives of innocent people. Folk do lie. So a a matter must be established by the testimony of two to three witnesses. Recall when Jesus sent the disciples out. They went out in pairs to proclaim the gospel. He sent them out in pairs. No one was ever sent alone so that the word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. The Christian life is a public life. It's lived out in community. It matters more what you do, how you live, than what you say. Believers are to live together in harmony and support one another. They know we're Christians by how we treat one another. They know we're Christians by how we resolve our conflicts. If the offending party doesn't listen to the offended and doesn't listen to the two or three witnesses, then Christ further instructs, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. That's excommunication. That's exclusion. That's, that's, that's shunning. And many say, don't exclude anybody from the church no matter what they've done. Jesus is instructing us differently, is he not? Is that harsh? If one cannot stand the correction of the church, then one cannot stand the church. We have seen the church fail to confront and correct 
evil in its midst. And thereby the world had to interject to correct the evil. For example, consider the corruption of the sexual abuse scandal in the church and the church's implicit and complicit criminality in failing to protect the most vulnerable people, children who were sexually abused in the church. There are many sinful offenses in the church with which the church left the world to resolve. The world's method of resolution is legal redress, which attempts the world's, the world's attempt to mirror a holy, a righteous, and a sinless God. And with that power and authority, the church should be leading the world, not following and succumbing to the laws of the world. Beloved, we are accountable first to our creator, then to one another. When we dishonor our brothers and sisters, we've already dishonored God and we've dishonored ourselves. We are to be more fearful of offending God. And offense to the Almighty renders the eventual offense to fellow humans. Being out of order with God is being out of order with self and it's being out of order with humankind. Restoration of the most important relationship with God requires confession. It requires repentance. If one professing the Christian faith refuses to confess and repent, that person is out of order with God first and also out of order with neighbor. And it renders an injured relationship I had to get on the phone this week. I was so, so convicted by this. I got to make this right. I can't get up here and preach this with this on me. I'm sorry. Whoop, I am sorry for what I said to you. It renders an injured relationship. The individual made the choice to injure and must make the choice to restore the relationship. Jesus is the head of the church and orders the life of the church. The world employs a different method of resolving conflict and some conflicts are heightened to the point where disputing parties seek legal redress. The United States is a litigious society. We love to go to court. Americans head to court without hesitation, without shame. There are countless shameful court television shows primarily for the sole purpose of exploiting people's problems and exploiting their pain solely for entertainment purposes. And we must examine ourselves if we find the exploitation of another's pain to be amusing. Examine ourselves. You know, such statements as, I'll see you in court. Go ahead, sue me, you won't get a dime. The legal system offers lit litigation, alternative dispute resolutions, mediation. The court will refer parties to mediation versus litigation to try to work it out. The legal system knows it's better. Come, let us come together and reason with one another. Jesus offered a different way of addressing sin. Jesus offered a private and loving way of resolving differences and restoring relationships. That's what, that's what this word is teaching in verses 15 and 16. 
His is the most excellent way of resolving conflict. Yes, wherever two people are gathered, conflict shall certainly ensue. We sin against one another. We hurt and injure one another. However, nevertheless, in verse 19, he informs us, again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. That's the good news. And I could surely use some good news. Two or three are gathered can go either way. It can go either way. The gatherings of Christians can be conflict or a harmonious and powerful cooperation. Jesus will show up for one, but not the other. The collective righteous gathering of but two believers in his name is unstoppable. And Jesus tells us right here, when you gather in my name, there can be no chaos. There can be no discord. There can be no failure to confess of sin, to make it right with your brother or your sister. Imagine the power of an entire body gathered in his name. Imagine the power of righteous unity. It's a superpower in the body of Christ. Jesus offered the most excellent way of confronting sin in the church. Go to your neighbor in love and the spirit of resolving the matter. And as humble servants, let us practice the most excellent way of the master. Amen. 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 Most merciful God, we thank you for your word and for your mercy. Thank you for a way out and a way forward. Thank you for, for a way back to you. May your people receive and live out your most excellent way of living together. Amen. Amen. Let us prepare our hearts for holy communion. United Methodist Church serves an open table. Come to the table, it's an open feast. Christ invites us all, rich, poor, saint, sinner, all are welcome. The outcast are welcome. Come to this blessed table where Christ reigns and all are welcome. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord. It is right, good, and a joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you. As you gave our ancestors in faith food and water in the desert, even when they turned away from you, you have promised to free us from all divisions and to give us eternal life. And so with your creatures on earth 
and all the heavenly chorus, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and holy is Jesus, your anointed one, who taught us to beware of trusting earthly treasures and warned us to put our trust in you alone. On the night in which he gave himself up, he took the bread, broke it, saying, this is my body broken for you. Take and eat all of you. Whatever you eat it, do so in remembrance of me. And likewise, after the meal, he took the cup of the new covenant. This is the cup of the new covenant poured out for you for the healing of the world. Whatever you drink it, do so in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be one in Christ, no longer divided by race or country or any other earthly sign, for all these gifts, we pour ourselves out before you in praise and thanksgiving. Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours. Almighty God, now and forevermore. You have your elements. Take, eat, for this is the body of our Lord broken for you. Take and drink, for this is the blood of our Lord that was shed for you. Holy God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us and the world. Having clothed ourselves in Christ through this meal, let us be Christ to a world that hungers and thirsts for love and hungers and thirsts for relationship, for reconciliation. In the name of the great giver of life, the one who is life itself, the breath of life, go in peace to love and serve the world. Amen. Amen. I can hear my Savior calling. I can hear my Savior calling. I can hear my Savior calling. Take thy cross and follow, follow me. Aren't you glad that it's the Almighty who's leading and that we can follow? Aren't you glad? Are you filled from the meal? Are you full? Praise God. 
Beloved, take care of yourselves. Take care of yourselves over this holiday weekend. Continue to social distance and know who is in charge. If we are still and listen, to be still and listen and follow. Follow where he leads. Hallelujah. Receive the benediction. May the grace and peace and love of our Lord be with you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and give you peace. Go in the confidence of your repentant heart and your restored relationship with the Almighty and your neighbor. Go and be the church of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. He has done great things for me. Great things, great things. He has done great things for me. I'm going to let my little light shine. Shine, shine. I'm going to let my little light shine. Shelter in the time of storm. Shelter, shelter, shelter in the time of storm. I'm going to be a witness for him. Witness, witness, I'm going to be a witness for him. He has done great things for me. Great things, great things. He has done great things for me. He has done great things. He has done great things for me. Great things, great things. He has done great things for me.